cut this molding shape. Now, we're ready to take over the bandsaw again, cut this off, and then we'll have a uh, flush trim next. Okay, so. Okay, now we got our flush trim bit set up in our router right here. And what we can do is come into here and flush trim this. Now, I can't go right into that cutter there because, you know, it's going to jump. So I'm flush here on the edges. So that allows me to get on the cutter and then come around and start cutting. So we'll come into here. I saw a big piece chip off, but it must not have chipped off in the waist, sir. So now we got that cut just perfect, just, just matching. We're going to bring it over here and we'll show you how it fits onto our, our crown front. Okay, we're ready to take this molding and set it on our crown plate here. And we got to get this on here perfectly parallel. It can't be sitting like that. It's got to be perfectly parallel. Okay, the first thing you do, remember that molding we got for the sides here? Well, you're going to attach that molding to your side pieces, you know, right here. And when you do, I'd put them about eight, you can put them up as high as you want, but I'd put them up about eight inches, okay? So we're gonna take this up eight inches. We got eight inches here, and you can see I temporarily screwed this on here on this side, and I got the other one screwed on to the other side. Now to make sure those are the same, very easily, what I would do is just intersect them like this, make sure that they're both meeting right down the line, right like that. So you know they're parallel. Okay, now we're gonna take these and use these as guides, bring it right up here, and instead, of the, instead of that square, and put this one right here. We're tight there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is bring this down until we hit, and we have the center line marked on the back of this molding right there. We're perfectly in the center, we're tight there and we're tight there. So now what we're going to do is clamp this temporarily. And same thing on the other side. Check, make sure you're still centered. Make sure we're tight here. Piece of wood underneath there, right there. Okay, now our clamp will fit. Right in the clamps. Okay, we're tight here, we're tight there. Get that tight. And we're tight here. We're centered. Okay. Everything's, we're centered perfect right in here. So now what we're going to do is attach that. And if you want to do that, you can glue it. You can, you can mark it if you want, right like this. Mark it, take it off and, uh, you know, do some sanding here if you want and everything too. But then you can put it right back on. And, and we can clamp glue that or you can screw it either way. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to screw it on. Some, I'll go get some screws. Okay, um, you can see what I did. I got that set there right where I want it. What I did is I countersunk some screws on the back and I screwed that molding on tight. You know, and you can glue it if you want too. I would. Okay, now I can take my clamps off 
then we'll take this over to the bandsaw again and rough cut that out on the bandsaw and this is going to be our template this time. We could do it all at once because our, we don't have a bit long enough. But we'll take this over to our bandsaw and get this cut. take this over here to our router table and uh, flush trim our bearings going to cut there will cut easy now we got to get started and to do that we just can't shove that into that cutter we have no other ways to go so I'm going to use my fence as a starting pin and, and we'll be able to hit the starting pin here and take it into the cutter because we're, we're setting here. I don't know if you understand what I did, but I, I used the fence as a starting, I used it as a pivot point to get into the bearing. If I had come in here like this, it just took in there and cut. But with that pivot point, it, I edge it in there, it's not going to kick because it's there. But uh, that allowed me to come in here. When you're coming across the top right here, a little tip here, that, that grain's running this way. And that is, this is really going to want to have a tendency to chip and go. So when you uh, use the bandsaw, get, get a good, nice and close here on the top. Okay, we've got our molding all cut now. Now we're ready to cut the miters on our crown plate. Okay, we have our clock laid down here. Remember that half inch plate that we put on there? I told you it gives us a, a little bit more dimension here also. Also, it tells me exactly where I have to put this, this bottom plate, this plate. So we're lined up right here. We want to be everything flush. All these pieces, pieces are flush right here. And we're lined up in the center. Okay, now what we're going to do is take and mark underneath here and underneath here where that 45 is going to go. See? Right there is where our 45 is going to be cut. Right over here. That's where our 45 is going to be cut, right there. Okay? So we're going to come over to our. Uh, table saw next and I'll show you how we cut these 45s on our crown front here. Okay, we're ready to start cutting our 45s on this front piece now and remember we marked them off. I got them set exactly where I'm going to go. In fact is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut these a little bit a little bit longer for that first clock I was working on today and when we have actually apply it to the clock we're making I'm going to use one that I've already cut here so because the clocks might be a 30 second off or anything or something so but we're going to show you how it's cut now remember at the very beginning when I on this plate I made this plate that was 20 by 28 I told you to make it perfectly square the reason I wanted it perfectly square is because there's no way I can use a miter gauge back here to get this square or miter gauge on this side because we got curves on both sides. So we're going to trust the fence here with the squareness of this whole plate. 
And it always works if you do it. And that's, that's the other reason why we made this a little bit shorter. This is 28 inches here. And if you look at the plans, this is 27 inches. So that way, but we're still cutting way inside of here. All right, so we're going to come into here now. We got it set up where we want to cut, and we're going to cut. Now, if you want to cut this on both sides and be safe, you can do that uh, and keep cutting in a little bit, or you can go right for the money. But what happens, if you don't have a 12-inch blade on your saw, you're not going to be able to cut all the way through this. There's no way, unless you have a 12-inch blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to here, and I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little back saw and cut that excess off, and I'll show you how we get it cut so it's straight. Okay, so we're going to come into here with a little back saw or something and, and, and cut that off. We want to cut off in the waste stock so we make sure we have enough left over that we can get rid of. So. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see what I cut off. I still have a little bit left there. So what I do is take a... a a sandpaper with a good piece on a piece of wood, a sanding block, this kind of circular motion, and just sand that off so she's perfectly flush with that miter. Just trim it out. It, you got a little bit of handwork on this uh, project after all. Okay, now we're ready to cut the other miter on the other side right here. Okay, so we got to flip it around, and right there's where we're going to cut. Now, on this side, you can see. We got this is all in the way now, right? So what you got to do is our wood is get some half inch stock. I got a piece of five eighths or three quarter inch plywood, whatever you want to put down. You know, I screwed that. Here's my fence. I got it set. I got my plywood set there tight. Now I got something to rub against, and and my molding and stuff will go above the plywood. So I've got it lined up where I'm going to cut. Now I'll just come into here because I can't use the fence, I'm using that. Okay, you'll notice when I was cutting that, I wasn't watching much of the blade. All my attention was right here, making sure this stayed square with here. Another way of doing this whole operation is to make a sled. You know, a, a thin quarter inch plywood sled, okay? And attach this, clamp it down to the sled and ride the sled through on, on the grooves and you can attach this square to the sled with these two square points here and just run the whole sled through and you wouldn't even have a fence or anything. But what that's going to do is raise you up another quarter of an inch and then you're going to have a, a quarter of an inch more to cut off of, uh, of our operation here. So, you know, it, either way you want to do it, it will work. You know, cutting a little bit more off of here wouldn't work if you want to go to the bother making a sled. So we'll trim that off there, sand those off. And what we're going to end up with then <coughs> is, is our piece like this. This is the same exact piece. These are two duplicate pieces, exactly the same, right there. And we're gonna use this one that's already fit for my clock that I do all the demonstrations with and we'll show you how to uh, attach the clock and the two, I mean the, the front here and the two sides. Next. All right, okay, now we're ready to take and uh, put our plate onto our clock right here. 
line up the centers, make sure everything should line up on that inside curve right there. And what's critical now is I got a 45 cut on my side, but I left this extra long so I can always cut some off the back. Okay, so I'm going to line up my 45 right here. And you can use some clamps and clamp this ahead of time, but okay, we're right there. We're right on the money. Right there. So I got a screw start in the back here. I'm going to screw that on. Okay. I got that on there screwed on tight. Same thing on the other side. My miter's lined up. And I'll screw that. Okay, now, if, you're, if, if, you, if I go now to take and put this on, if it doesn't line up or anything, you know, uh, you can see I gotta screw that down tighter on the inside here with a longer screw. But if it doesn't line up or anything, I can always back it out and re-screw it. Because inside this hood here, None of the screws are going to matter. None they're, they're not going to show. And then you want to glue it too. So I'm going to mess around with this here and get this lined up just nice, nice and tight. Okay, you can see our, our basic clock is pretty well done. We, you know, we're, we just got the molding sitting down here in the bottom and the molding, waste molding just sitting there. It's not attached or anything. And we just got this kind of dry clamped up here, you know, with our, with our hood and everything, you know. But you want to take your time, get all the miters lined up and everything and, and get sanded and uh, do a lot of sanding and stuff, but uh, that's the basic cabinet. Okay, now, from there on, I'm gonna take you inside the clock now, and we're gonna show you a few things that have to go on, what, what are going on inside the clock. So, but as far as the outside, that's fine. You can put a raised panel here, or you can put a, or a mirror. Anyway, you got glass, 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 and uh, get this, we have this rubber panel retainer that will snap into that groove we did. Uh, look at the glass panel DVD on YouTube. Uh, it, it's a half hour DVD and it shows you all about glass panels. It'll show you how to attach that rubber panel retainer to do the, to do the glass and everything. But we're going to now, we're going to go refer to this other clock that we did uh, years ago and show you some of the other stuff you have to do with, for, the, for the movement and everything. So we're going to work on, show you on that next. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, reference off this clock right here now. And uh, this clock was built about 35 years ago, made out of cherry. 35 years ago and about 35, 35 to 40 pounds lighter too, so when I was doing it. But I'm gonna refer to it. You can, you know, get a lock and key. If you wanna get a lock and key, simple to do that. Uh, inside here, what we have here on the dial is we call a dial plate. Uh, in, in our instructions, we have the clock dial cover. You know, we got a style there, a style there, the bottom rail, and then the top up here, and you use template three. We use template three to cut that out. It's the same template as here. Now, what this does, it just kind of fits right over the dial. Here's one that here from an old clock a long time ago, but that dial face, once you, after you get it, and you mortise and tenon, mortise and tenon it together, or tongue and groove, tongue and groove and it's only about a half inch thick. And you can see on this one here, we put a little decorative edge around the inside too after it's made if you want. But that just goes into your cabinet like this here. And our cabinets now are wider. We made them wider, but it'll go inside your cabinet, come up there and it'll screw to the inside of your uh, frame on the front. And you wanna get it set. You wanna get it set so that it just encompasses your dial just perfect. Now. I'm going to turn this around and see if I can show you how we set the, the movement on. And I'll talk later about the movements. But, uh, and you can see here where we uh, cut out, if I can move this a little bit here. On the curve here, we took a straight bit and finished all this. We got a different curve here now, but we took a straight bit so we can cut some straight glass here. We just made a gradual curve, but you can see how we took a straight bit and rotted all that out inside there. And you can see where we used to miter those corners there, but now we style and rail it right up and it's a lot stronger. Okay, I'll keep going here. Um, we're gonna turn it around now and I'll show you how your, your movement sets on a, 
on the, on the dial, uh, we got a dial seat that we want, want you to make next. Okay, you can see our movement sitting in here. It's a, a brass plate, probably about eight inches by six inches, and it's sitting on a dial seat. And you can see that dial seat is, we got two blocks on the ends of, on the two sides. Okay, the instructions show you how to make this little seat, you know, you, these blocks, you screw them to the side of your cabinet, okay? And then the dial seat, there's also instructions how to make this, that sets on here. And what you can do is adjust that right here. We got a bolt coming down there with some wing nuts and can get your dial pushed up right against that dial face that you made there. So and anyway, your dial right here, all your cables or chains, will see your dial sits right on top of there and your chains hang right through there or cable, if you got cable driven movement. But that's, and then you can have to set that up and down, move this up and down with clamps till you get that dial face right in the center of that 10 and a half inch dial. So that's what you gotta do, you gotta do a lot of messing around, you know, get your, get your block set and your, and your uh, seat set here and uh, movement set and, and shove it in there tight and, and get some wing nuts on some bolts there and tighten her down and, and you're set to go there. And another thing you'll need is you wanna make sure that you got some levelers on the bottom of this clock because this clock has to be, this movement has to be perfectly level and for it to work good, you know. And then the chimes, you can see what we did there. We got a big block here. We just bolted these chimes. Here's our chimes. You can, you can hear them right there. They're lined up against there. But those chimes have to line up in there. And it, when you get the movement, it tells you a lot about how to set the movement too. So I'm not going to get into that too heavy. But uh, the, the thicker piece of wood you got, the better they're going to sound. Okay, the other thing we got are these windows on the side. I'm gonna move this around here a little bit. Remember those openings we had on the side there? Ours are pretty large. Ours are a lot taller now. But what, what we got there is I just made a, uh, on the inside it's like a glass panel. Uh, just made a little, whatever you want, whatever kind of shape you want, and just get some fabric and staple to the back there. And you can take this here and uh, I got some clips there. There's some clips. You just turn that in there like that, and they'll set. That will set right in there. Okay, and I'm gonna clip it. Those little things, little plastic things that turn and hold that in, and that fabric will let the sound travel out and resonate a lot for you. But uh, I th can't think of anything else. You slide your back in and put your back so you can get access to here to to take it out and oil it and everything. All the instructions come with the movement. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the clock movement itself. Okay, there's other things you can do with your clock. Uh, uh, this particular one, we put some overlays on it, Carpathian burl overlays. Uh, you can put wood carvings on there, your favorite football team logo. Uh, uh, I did a clock at home that had 22 and a half degree angles. I built the carcass, come out with 22 and a halves and come out here, and all these up here were raised panels and stuff too, you know? So you can customize a lot, but but from here on in, it's got to be the same for the movement. Uh, you can see we also took a rotter bit and rotted this edge here on this clock, you know, after it's all done. And then we also put these pillars on there because we have our tongue and groove showing there. You can take these pillars, all they are is right here, I got one piece right here, a, a sample, just a, a, a sample and put a decorative edge on there and that hides that tongue and groove going down the, down the front there too. Uh, the movements, I'll talk to you a little bit about the movements. There's two basic companies you can buy that are both good from Germany, uh, Ergos, U-R-G-O-S, and Keeniger. Look them up on the internet and they'll tell you a lot about, uh, you can find out a lot about uh, movements on the internet. Uh, they got the cable driven ones that I like, which I like about the cable, you just got your key, press into here and you can see you crank them up, crank your weights up. Uh, this one's got triple chimes. It plays Whittington, Westminster, St. Michael's chimes. Uh, it's got the, a moon dial. Uh, it's also got the Lear pendulum. Uh, you can spend a lot. You can get tubular, tubular chimes. And, 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 and there's lots of different accessories you can get with the movements. Um, otherwise, uh, we pretty well covered everything, I think. And uh, you can learn a lot on the internet on the, on the movements. Uh, 
I hope, uh, hope you guys can see how easy it is to build this. That's why I love having my students build these. Uh, but any of you fathers or grandfathers out there, it's a great project to, to hand down to your sons or your grandsons or granddaughters or daughters. And uh, it, it'll stay in the family. It's a heirloom, stay in the family forever. And you'll, you'll have fun building it. And, uh, and you can see after what we're doing today, it's not that hard if you got the right tools and so forth. And uh, you'll have a lot of fun building it. Uh, thanks for watching.